Oh, hey, come on in. Have some snacks, have a drink, have a seat, and let's enjoy some couch co-op. There's no better way of having long-lasting memories with your friends than to play games cooperatively while sitting at punching length of each other. When I say campaign co-op, I mean that you're cooperatively working together, not battling each other. This removes a lot of great games, like Mario Kart, Nidhogg, Towerfall, Gang Beast, Sports Friends, Samurai Gun. These are all great games, but I'm talking about completing campaigns with a buddy by your side. There's this innate feeling of joy that you get when you work together side by side to take down a massive boss, or strategically solve a puzzle, or just get weird. The element of human interaction gives us an extra element of joy when you're sitting with your friends in utter delightment or intense anger. And sadly, these side-by-side -side gems are getting harder and harder to find. So here's a comprehensive list of some of the best couch co-op games to ever grace my living room. Castle Crashers is pure hack and slashy fun with friends. Four people can play together at a time, and even though teamwork is necessary, you level up and keep your own loot. You work together to attack bosses from multiple angles and revive your fallen teammates to progress. There's an element of selfishness, though, when the loot rains down. And at the end, you get to battle each other to the death to see who claims the princess. So there's a really good balance between camaraderie and every man for himself. It's also an incredibly stimulating game visually. There's always something weird happening, so it's constant excitement from beginning to end. Anyone who grew up in an arcade can tell you Classic Gauntlet was all about co-op fun. The new version rekindles that classic love with updated graphics and remixed audio, and a few twists on gameplay. What we all knew of bomb potions are now relics, and they work just as you'd want them to. But this version makes death a bit more of a problem. You can run out of lives in this one pretty easy, so it makes you really appreciate life as you have it. There are only 12 levels in three realms. So you might burn through this in an evening or two, but it's time well spent. You'll enjoy the exploration and the combat and yelling at Elf for always needing food. Whether or not this brings back a wave of nostalgia, Gauntlet is a solid game to take on. Resident Evil 5 follows the beloved formula of 4, but adds a second player. During the missions, you can trade weapons and ammo as you need, which is good because the game mostly focuses on action. This means uncovering hidden ammo, gold, and herbs is a huge bonus when playing with an ally. Resident Evil 5 lends itself incredibly well to couch co-op, as you can communicate really easily with each other when one of you needs assistance with kicking off an infected, or there's the occasional puzzle that requires both of you working together to leave a particular area or just take down a large boss. There's a whole slew of LEGO games from Star Wars to Batman, and they're all pretty good. If you were ever a fan of the Harry Potter books or movies, this game is a perfect addition. Playing with a companion really helps convey that you are going to Hogwarts and learning the spells. You can head to Diagon Alley and get unique costumes and spells and chocolate frogs, spells of a small variation depending on who you play, so you get a sense of independence from your friend. You can finish the story in a mere six hours, but you'll find that there's a lot of meat in the game uncovering all the secrets and collectibles, allowing for hours of fun. Hogwarts is such a fantastical world that you'll be really glad you had a friend there to share the experience with. Super Mario 3D World takes a lot of what we liked in Galaxy and gives you what you wanted, a chance to play it with a buddy. And when I mean buddy, I don't mean that star that just like stands around and collects coins and has no actual purpose. In this one, you're your own character with your own trademark move, like Peach's Hover. The difficulty is flexible for most ages. You simply come back bubble style and keep playing. And even in death, there's typically humor in the silly scenario you're in, like riding in this oversized cartoon dragon. You'll actually appreciate having those extra set of eyes to spot all the green stars, which are really well hidden throughout the level. And those extra hands come in handy when grabbing as many coins as you can in a short burst of time. Playing with friends isn't just a nice feature in Mario 3D World, it's what makes the game so distinctively enjoyable. Well, I can't have a list of amazing co-op experiences without debatably the best couch co-op campaign ever. Debatably. You get to play as one of two amazing characters, the intense Sergeant Marcus Phoenix or the level-headed Dom Santiago, as they take on the Locust Horde and cut into their faces with a rad chainsaw gun. The story is actually deeper than you might think, and there are moments that you'll be glad to share with friends. But you'll also benefit from your comrade to find cog tags which are placed throughout the area as well as letters and medical records to help make the world feel real. 
This is a game where you'll verbally tell your friend to go the opposite direction, to flank the enemy in the middle, and feel really good about yourself when it's executed well. It can give you this XCOM feel where you're strategically planning out moves ahead of time, so it's not just pointing and shooting. You're working together to figure out the best strategy to take everyone out with minimum damage. Puzzles. The vast amount of puzzles you and a friend can work through together. There's something incredibly satisfying about playing through good puzzle with friends. Not only who's going to figure it out first and then explain it to the other person, but who's going to be the first to execute it. If you're not Laura, you're Totep, with completely different skills that benefit in different ways. Laura's a little bit more agile, with Totep being kind of more of the muscle, and it's a really nice balance to see how they work together to solve these different puzzles. It's worth mentioning that there is another Tomb Raider called Temple of Osiris, and it allows for four people. But Guardians of Light is my personal favorite because it's a bit longer and it's got some real head-scratching puzzles. You can pretty much pick one, anyone, and start playing. From beginning to end, the series is pretty engaging and genuinely interesting. And with the Halo Master Chief Collection, you can easily alternate between the stories and choose the difficulty which is best for you, although you should keep it legendary. The horizontal split screen gives you more than enough screen space to take out enemies while seeing all the necessary gauges. Although there won't be much difference between you and your friend, the gun that you select actually can have a huge impact on the way that you might go about a particular area. You can work together to flank enemies, or you can just both go in guns blazing. It's actually fine to die in this game because then you can just find different ways to attack the same area, and you find it really enjoyable to figure out what worked for you two and what didn't. And you'll always share the bond of the I'll drive, you shoot moment. It's hard to try and live up to Portal, this one-of-a-kind game that really makes you think that you are so smart when you solve a puzzle. Portal 2 gives it a fantastic effort, and it does something that the first game never did. It lets you try these puzzles with a friend. You can play Portal 2 online. The game gives you ping buttons to hint at the other player what to do, where to put your portal. But honestly, I think this game is just played better in the same room. You can talk it out between each other and be really clear about where they should be and what your plan is. There's also moments where you can be silly by tripping each other up just to be jerks. Portal 2 drives communication between two people working together to achieve a common goal, and they can do this without stress or frustration. It's just you two and Gladys. I went with Borderlands 2, even though the pre-sequel is more recent, because Borderlands 2 is my favorite. You play with your buddy as an assassin, gunzerker, siren, or go commando, with a group of characters that each play completely differently. The dialogue is playful and witty and actually funny, but the story isn't why you play. Collecting loot and sharing weapons is way more fun with someone else. I either play it with someone or I don't play it at all. It's such a good feeling to take down a massive boss and then go through the loot to find an amazing weapon for yourself. And sometimes you find something that's just best to give to your friend. Borderlands 2 will make you want to help out your teammate and make them the best player they can be because a strong character will be better to help you out when you need it. And most likely, they're going to return the favor. Ultimately, one of the best modern couch co-op games in recent years, Rayman Legends is exactly what it claims, a legend. The platformer gets difficult, especially if you're collecting all the lumps, but working together lightens the load. And if the other player does fall short, they kind of just expand and float around in the level with you. So it makes the game something you can enjoy with an experienced player or like your little niece. Either way, it's challenging and rewarding with some of the most tremendous music levels that will leave you with a massive smile on your face. Diablo 3 easily earns a spot on this list for being so damn good. Playing with a friend will never feel so permanent because you can spend hundreds of hours in this world and still want to play. Playing through the campaign is just the tip of this game. The sky is the limit for your character's progression. From gaining levels and moving on to paragon levels, moving from master difficulty to torment levels 1 through 6, your character can always be improved, like finding the best weapon ever and then enhancing it with gems or enchanting it to change one of the properties. And just wait until you start gambling blood shards with Kadala. It's like your controller is pumping out pure oxygen to keep you playing. You and your friend will form a permanent bond from this amazing and seamlessly endless adventure. I think you knew this one was coming because most people think it's the best. 
The campaign for Left 4 Dead is perfect for groups because you cannot do it alone. These campaigns are meant for you to work together, and you'll want your friends fighting by your side so you can cheer together as you clamber onto a helicopter or scream at them when they set off a car alarm. Oh, what the hell? Oh. This is that perfect group game when you yell at each other when you need help or come running over to revive your fallen friend in these amazing moments of glory and failure. There's a terrifying group of special infected that each take unique tactics to take it down. For example, the Charger, where you might ask one of your friends to play as a decoy while the others try and take him down from afar. The campaigns are so much fun that even though you're going down the same path, you'll end up playing them differently, so it feels like a new experience each time. You can get a lot of mileage out of those five different campaigns, and you can always go for the gnome run. When it comes to co-op campaigns, Left 4 Dead is one of the best you'll ever play. There's more than enough gameplay here to keep you on your couch for probably the rest of eternity, but I'm sure I missed a few of your favorites. So put them in the comments below, and thanks for watching.